live from the FIA Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. This is Silicon Angle and Wiki Bond's production of HP Discover, live in Barcelona. I'm John Furrier. With my co-host Dave Vellante, our next guest is Seamus Dunn, who's now the uh, VP of Data Center Services at HP. Uh, CUBE alumni, I've been on multiple times. In fact, a few yeah. years ago you announced uh, some innovative stuff. We were bullish on it. We were like, hey Dave, that, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, it's doing pretty well. Welcome back. Thank you. Good to be back. <laughs> so tell uh, us, um, just to replay the tape, I wish I had the video handy, Jeff Frick would love it, but we do have the video, we'll pull that up and I'll put it up on the crowd chat. Um, when you guys launched Data Center Care, it was big. We were, Dave and I remember that time, we were talking about DevOps, been, that was the beginning yeah. of the DevOps movement. Yeah. We saw a lot of migration towards cloud, so obviously the customers saw that and said, hey, I got to prepare, and it's doing pretty well. So zero in revenue to? We, billions. 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 Yep. I can't quote the number, but I do know the number. Billions, uh, <laughs> uh, thousands of customers across every vertical in 150 countries, it resonated and uh, took off. So uh, data we center care busy. was the product, we, you know, we covered it on. So why did it resonate? So what was the big deal? Was it because of the DevOps movement? Was it because customers became sensitive to this, this new marching orders of migration to the cloud or something else? You know, the, the reason it resonated was the value proposition that we knew was associated with this was to uh, help you operate what you had in IT and then help you evolve your IT. That was our proposition. Help you better operate what you have and help you evolve to a new style of IT. And we specifically said to give you agility uh, of your IT and to give you reliability of your IT. And it, part of the reason we knew that that was required value proposition was it was too complex, it was multi-vendor, both out across your hardware, up, up your stack, a lot of seams to, to, to manage. So we actually, it's a partnership-based service where we can put a one number to call across your, your data center and um, simplify, hide the seams, uh, give you reliability, allow you to evolve and partner with you to evolve so you can achieve some agility of your, your infrastructure in your data center. And it just, it just really, really resonated and uh, people needed it. So new style of IT, part of the turnaround, you see in the shift of HP, so that's a good positive sign. I want to highlight that because I think it does resonate, does point to what the customer behavior is. So I got to ask you, whenever you take territory, you, someone loses territory. Was there some other services involved that were collapsing into this? Um, was it greenfield opportunity? Did you, what kind of patterns did you see in the marketplace? Um, well, you know, the first thing is when we, when we took on data center care, and. We, we, we partnered with a customer. What we did is we freed up their resources. So in some ways, we freed up the operations and IT teams to do more work, do more innovative work. Um, we did take territory from people. So for example, we, we took territory in the data center with the footprint in the data center. So a, a, a recent example is, is IBM. They sold their server business to Lenovo. We put it to our customers that maybe you need somebody that's going to stay with you. And you know, so we took territory there. Uh, By taking the IBM contracts from the Lenovo piece. Absolutely, yeah. And we help them with your refresh cycles and how you want to manage that. That's one example. We, we also then have continually added new capabilities into that service. So we talked about flexible capacity, I recall last year. That was an obvious need to give you cloud economics on your data center. Um, we've added what we've called operational support services here in EMEA, which is you know taking some what we'd call maybe outtasking with some tools and advisory services that are packaged to, to do a little more above the infrastructure to help you and free up your resources. We've added our, all sorts of analytics, monitoring. Almost every month we add some new capability because of customer feedback. It's that when you have a partnership engagement like that, you're, you're intimately involved with customer needs. So it's very easy to innovate uh, you know, and add new capabilities. Yeah, we had Scott Weller on, who's uh, your boss. Um, yeah. He's always soft-spoken, but we've pretty much been on point on this 
I think going back to one of the announcements we did almost four years ago, he saw the trend towards the cloud, this whole DevOps thing, mm -hmm. and he really was articulate on what he wanted to do, and it seems like you guys made a lot of progress. So I got to ask you, has it been um, technology driven? Has it been process driven, both? Um, and what things are, have you done great, and what are you working on now that's the next set of uh, innovations? That's, that's a great lead into what I, I wanted to say. So, it's been everything. I mean, people, process, service, knowledge, and capability, and technology. So, we're not building a service in a partnership in your data center uh, alone as a service organization. We're building it on top of the innovation and EG, and with our cloud and Helion business unit. Um, so it's it's very much technology, but it's it's very what we focused on is we're going to help you better operate what you have today, and we're going to help you take you on the journey to whatever stage of the new style of IT you want to be on. So, and that's with in partnership with our cloud business unit, our product divisions, from server storage networking. It's with our consulting organization. So it's all of the above. Now what we've seen over two years with data center care and flexible capacity is. When it comes down to it, just above all of the, the new capabilities we've added in, is IT, because it's not as agile as it needs to be, is holding back business. The di businesses are digital. They need flexibility and agility for their business. Often the lines of business are running ahead of where IT is at. So that's, that's, that's what we've seen more than, more than anything. They need agile IT to make agile business. And, what, what, we've, what we're doing right now, the, the main thing actually that we're, we're working on over the last uh, number of months is what we're calling data center care infrastructure automation. With data center care infrastructure automation, we're putting together a set of advisory services, processes, and tools, and we're, we're putting it together and building it into data center care um, as, a, as a service, <coughs> which will help you get to what we call programmable data center, or maybe some people use the term software-defined data center. But basically it means that you can program your, your data center. You can revision it, you can deploy it, um, <coughs> you can monitor it, you can roll it back. Um, <coughs> so you can move in a far more agile way with, with, with your IT. And, that, and that's, that's like, we think this is a game changer. For yeah, I mean, infrastructure is code. You've been talking about that, John, since I met you. Um, but I want to, Seamus, unpack a little bit the, the whole new style of, of IT. Every time I hear that term, I, I picture Meg. She yeah. likes that term. And then she, when she, you know, she's talking to a big audience, and she talks about cloud, mobile, social, big data, security. Okay, that's cool. But when you get down to the front lines in IT, yeah. they all, to me, it's all driven by cloud. Right, they want to yeah. be cloud-like. You know, you're talking about programmable, what I call programmable infra infrastructure automation. Yeah, it's like give me a way to code through an API, give me access to a data center yeah. that I can then provision, manage, orchestrate. You know, through software. Yeah, got it. Okay, great. So that's a new style of IT, and you're talking about data center care helping people get more out of what they have today because that's yeah. critical. Everybody always wants to just go to the new stuff yeah. and forget about the old, uh, but then get from A to B uh, and, and do so in a way that delivers ROI for, for the company. So describe that new style of IT in practical terms as what's actually happening on the ground in your customer base. Sure. Um, I think you hit the nail on the head, Dave, first. So the key is to get more out of the IT that you have today. Uh, to get more out of the IT that you have today, obviously data center care as we've constructed it as a service uh, is, 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 is core, but adding infrastructure automation is going to allow you to automate and really software control your data center. You can think of your data center as a piece of software. Now, Scott Weller, is, as you know, is a visionary behind us in our business, and he uses a Russian doll analogy. So, data center care, flexible capacity, infrastructure automation, means that whatever your, your data center is, your IT will be supported, you have a partner to support it, we can give you flexible capacity, so you can have the economics of a cloud environment on your own premise, and we're going to automate the infrastructure for you. That's sort of the outer shell, regardless of the data center that you have. Now it only gets better as you add some of the technologies that you see all around us here in Discover. 
Um, when you add in technologies at the, just at the infrastructure level, so the converged systems, one view as a management software, it just makes it better. It's making it software defined at, at the infrastructure level. When you move into software defined networking, as you see over in our networking booth, it gets even better. When you build up in that and you think I can have a hybrid environment and I can use with, with Helion, I can have a platform that allows me to move on and off premise with Helion OpenStack, um, it gets even better. So we're, we're starting at the data center level with data center care, with flexible capacity, with infrastructure automation, as I've described, packaging advisory services, packaging uh, uh, tools and processes, and that's kind of an outer layer of the Russian doll, as, as we're using as an analogy, but it gets even better as you add and transition to the new technologies in every piece of the layer. And that's that's when you ultimately get to what's what's the the best value proposition of the, the, the new style of IT. And, and, and you mentioned automation before, it's sort of a statement of direction, I guess, but how about connecting to some of those automation tools and things of that nature? Can you talk about that a little bit? Is that in the plans? Or? Yeah, well, so we have connected products, um, and we, we get a lot of data, and we do a lot of analytics with that connected products and the data we get back. But with infrastructure automation built into data center care, what we're doing is allowing a level of, of, of programming to think of your data center as software, which means you can make rapid changes all the time. It takes risk because you're doing it so often. It takes risk out of the equation. Um, because to make changes on, on, on the infrastructure and the data center uh, as it exists today feels risky. I have to plan, I have to do some test, uh, 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 dev test on the side, I'm going to implement it in production. Um, but if you can program your data center, uh, be able to provision it, be able to configure it uh, and operate it uh, more, more programmably, um, the, the, the risk is taken out. So the, the need to connect at those layers is abstracted away. Mm -hmm. um, and it gets even better then as you, you move into the, the, the newer technologies. So we have fine. questions from the crowd, Seamus, from Tim Crawford. Um, okay. What's the value proposition for HP DC services today and moving forward? Um, so the value proposition for, for data center care today? And he said there's a difference between theory and reality. Yeah. I don't know what he means by that, but. Well, the reality is that the two and a half thousand customers that we have and um, we're continuing to grow with and, and adding at a, a rapid I'm adding to it at a rapid rate. Uh, the benefit that they're getting is we're helping them get more out of the IT that they own today. Um, there's one number to call for their data center. We look after uh, not just the HP infrastructure but the the the, 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 the software to back to back arrangements uh, up through the stack to other vendors hardware. And not only that, we we simplify and hide the seams across that complexity in their data center. And not only that, we helped them operate, not just operate, but evolve to whatever style of IT they want. So he asked, how is how much is that is of, of the success is driven from other sources like EDS? I don't very, know. Very, you, very, very little. Very, little. very, very little at all, actually. I mean, there's some, and we, we certainly engage with that, but uh, they are, our enterprise service organization uh, it is not really part of this the, the data center care sales. Okay, so it's separate. Yes. Yeah, it's a separate thing. So yeah. Tim, separate question. And they're not basically moving EDS money over. Well, but yeah. so, but Tim brings up an interesting point. He's, he's saying that data center software is great in theory. The reality is very few uh, uh, organizations are capable of getting there. That's sort of music to the ear of the services guys. Yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> so, having said that, we're, we're going to help. I mean, Am I, I've said it once, I've said it many times, Amazon's turning the data center into an API. Now granted, it's public cloud, it's only yeah. certain workloads, but it's very clear that that model of being able to program infrastructure is one that yeah. that is is changing the world. Now, where people and are- very, And very relevant, it's not a one-trick It is relevant, yeah. right, and it scales, um, and it's changing the economics of the data center. Now, Tim's right. Uh, the reality is, is on the maturity curve. Yeah. You know, we're not there yet. Um, outside of certain apps, you know, the obvious stuff, test dev, maybe web apps, but more and more is moving. So I wonder if you could comment on yeah, that. Yeah, I'd love to comment yeah, on it. The first reaction is, uh, 
two years ago when we first started talking about data center care, there was a lot of questions like that. And uh, you know, now it's like there's not so many questions. <laughs> D doubting the you got a spring in your step, you got a smile, <laughs> things are going yeah, well. I mean, I, like we're pretty happy with <laughs> well, the, the we, business we is there. The business is there. Yes, yes. Well, the next step into the question, like just taking the public cloud question again. So, and, and I think the comment was there's the reality and um, you know there's the, 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 the there's the value proposition and that they both match. Listen, the 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 approach of going out to the public cloud is is an economic one, and it's because I can, as you say, access through an API. What I've just tried to describe and what we're building on with data center care, with data center care infrastructure automation is allowing you to do that in a hybrid environment, both public cloud, and but allow you to do it for all the benefits of on-premise. We're building in flexible capacity, we're changing the economics to be more similar to what you would expect from an as-a-service public cloud. We're giving you an as-a-service on-premise with those economics. With the infrastructure automation approach, we're allowing you to think of your data center as a piece of software and access to true APIs. In fact, you can think of that same logic going down through each of the layers, down to Helion, uh, or, or OpenStack, or the, whatever platform you're operating on. You can think of it the same way. In fact, with software-defined devices, like software-defined networking, you're allowing that API access. So think of that model going through the whole stack. But we're going to start at the data center level. Data center care, we've already got a presence, we build flexible capacity, and we're building infrastructure automation. And that, we're going to have this available to our customers uh, that have data center care already over the next few months, and we're building out a capability. So we're, we're betting on it. I, I so flexible capacity, let's talk about flexible capacity, because that's an interesting one, it gets into, because the thing that I always ask is, or talk to, when I talk to, to IT organizations, essentially they say, you got to compete with Amazon, or you, you got to go to the, yeah. go to the public cloud, but you have to at least demonstrate the type of flexibility, agility, and cost structure that the public cloud can. That's the, the mandate. Yeah because um, you get pressure to do that. And that's what your business is all about, is yeah. enabling that. Now let's take flex capacity, because I want to I want to probe that a little bit. If I understand it, flex capacity is essentially you guys will over provision a capacity in the data center and turn it on with a key as I need it, right? Yeah. Now maybe I'm simplifying it, but well, will that eventually move to, to, to uh, a Helion-based? flexible capacity approach, for example, because... It, it already has that. It already has, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> because otherwise you can't compete on a margin basis, right? I mean, is that so fair assertion? So, so, you know, there's a, there's a number of customers here who, at, at the event today who are speaking that have benefited from flexible capacity in a huge way. Our growth rate with flexible capacity and customer adoption is faster than even what it was for data center care. It's, it's, it's rocketing. It's, it's hard to keep up. Really, the value proposition is not just over provisioning capacity at all. It's allowing you to have public cloud economics, pay per use infrastructure yeah. on your premises. Pay by the drink. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the over provisioning it's, it's, is, it's, it's, it's metered. It's used. It's used. Per, it's, yeah. it's it's billed as it's me, uh, you, we it meter. We meter public then, cloud in the data center. It is. Well, but over provisioning you, is the means. But that's not the value proposition. I didn't mean to imply that's the value proposition. The value proposition is, as you're saying, it's the agility, pay by the drink, please uh, carry it's, on. It's cash, so you're not yeah. outlaying cash. Right. It's, it's speed, uh, you get it fast. It's elasticity or flexibility to scale up and down. Um, yeah, why wouldn't people take advantage of that? It's, I mean, it's a no-brainer, and in fact, what's, what's interesting is, of course, that you know, the, the, the decision makers you know, for something like that change and evolve a little bit where sometimes uh, going to Amazon was like a shadow activity that people did with their credit card on yeah, the side. Yeah, don't tell anybody. And, and uh, you know, that's unfortunately was the reality. But for flexible capacity, once, once the CIO, the CFO, and the line of business managers grasp it, the purchasing manager grasp it, it's a no-brainer. It's, it's exactly what they need to do to scale, and it's, it's a part of the value proposition for the agility they need, the economics they need, uh, it's, it becomes a no-brainer. And you know, if you look at what some of our, our developers, and if you move to think about DevOps, what they have to do, they, they have really gone for developing on a platform, and they've assumed uh, a pass model out on public cloud. In fact, with flexible capacity, with infrastructure automation, with all of the other technologies as you layer it down, when you choose the right platform, you can do all of that on your premises. 
with all the economics, the benefits you get, the speed, the agility. So we put a number of these things together and join the value proposition up. They're not only in isolation. So flexible capacity has a great value proposition in and of itself. But when you couple that with automation of your infrastructure or of your data center, and you couple it with data center care wrapped around it, uh, that's when the value proposition comes together, and that's how you achieve agile IT. What percent of the customers you talk to, so you mentioned you could do all that on premises, what percent of your customers say, I don't want to do anything on premises? I just want to go to the cloud, can you help me? Is that a single digit percentage? Is it zero? Is it uh, double digits? Well, I, I think everybody wants to have a cloud, wants to go to some cloud. cloud. They want the econ, they yeah. want some cloud. So hybrid, hybrid IT. We hybrid IT is virtually 100%. Al al almost 100% of the customers that we have with data center care want on-premise IT also. Um, it, and they want, so that's why we built a hybrid support model that we announced last, last year. So hybrid's, hybrid's the dominant model going forward in, yes. in, 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 yeah, in, yeah, from what you can what see. Seeing, yeah. And there's outliers that are maybe say, I don't want anything in the cloud. It's a bad word. Maybe it's you know government organizations or yeah. maybe certain financial services. And yeah. then, uh, is it correct that there's outliers that want to put everything in Amazon? I mean, reInvent Amazon had a big push on going all in the cloud. Are you seeing any of that, some uh, of that? We probably Virtually. see that with startups, maybe. Yeah, okay. Uh, so it's outliers you know, or startups. Or yeah, our enterprise customers, you know, they're, they're, I, IT is their business, it's integral to their business. They want the cloud proposition. There are some things they want to put out in the public cloud. Uh, but ultimately, uh, the, 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 the security, the compliance, the latency, the performance, they, they want, they need an on-premise value proposition, but their expectations for their data center, in terms of the agility, the flexibility, the economics, are being set by the public cloud experience. So I, I like to use a, because I live in an old house, a right, really old okay. house, like 1600s, right? So do I. And anytime, I think we've had this conversation, anytime you do anything, like you put an extension on, you got to build, old to new, anytime you connect old with new, that's yep. the most complicated part. And I presume that's true with IT and, and hybrid cloud. So how- Dave, that's exactly the point. I think that's, that's what I was trying to say. We will, with data center care, with infrastructure automation, we will help you get more out of what you have today. That's, that's critical. In, in infrastructure automation, the tools we've put together, the competency we've built out for advisory services, the processes to be wrapped around that, bolting and extending into data center care. That's all about getting more out of what you have today and creating a context for you to be able to move and transition technologies underneath that. Uh, be that converged systems for your infrastructure, different management, software defined, uh, hybrid. It allows you, it gives you a context to get more out of what you have today and, and make the technology transitions underneath it to ultimately get it to be more agile. That, that is a value proposition. That's why I think about exactly as you described. How do I how do I look after my old while still making it better in the future? And that's 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 a, I think a good way to look at what we've what we've done here with data center care. So infrastructure automation is the big announcement. Uh, Seamus Dunn here inside the cube. Uh, it's been great watching you guys uh, grow. Scott's been on early on with the cube. Scott's been our fifth year uh, here at HP Discover. We're embedded now. It's like. Uh, but I got to say, you know, you guys are moving up the stack and really taking a pragmatic approach. Obviously, you're winning. Obviously, the numbers speak for themselves. Yep. You got happy customers. So we got infrastructure automation. Are you going to launch next year in, uh, infrastructure orchestration service? <laughs> you know, uh, we, we've <laughs> can known, I, we've can known, I connect that dot? We've known 2016 announcements yet. <laughs> but, uh, we will I'm projecting you know. the winner of the uh, state of the data center will be infrastructure automation next, uh, orchestration next year. We believe it's. Uh, <laughs> we believe infrastructure automation is a game changer, and we're going to build that out next year. And we'll keep taking feedback from the customers. When you've got intimate relationships with with, with customers, uh, you know it's great. It's the best place to get feedback. So. They'll, they'll you know, determine large Automation is a great thing. You extract away the complexities and provide value. That's the future yeah. of the cloud. Seamus Dunn here inside the Cube. Great to have him on VP of the Services Group here with an HP uh, Cube alumni um, out in the front lines helping customers. Great to always hear your perspective. Congratulations on your success and your new launch. This is the Cube. We'll be right back after this short break. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back.